Hi, I'm Jeff from New York. Please like and subscribe. Young Billionaire, Season 2, Episode 1, Jeff is looking for Lelaine. Jeff froze as his heart sank. He had never been with a girl before, and he never imagined that he and Elsa would be in bed next to each other. He sat down on the edge of the bed, depressed. His face was red and an image of a person appeared in his mind, and it was Lelaine. How else could he tell Lelaine how sorry he was, after he did that to another girl? If Lelaine knows, how can she tolerate that? He thought. After a while, two arms hugged him from behind, Elsa put her face behind her and said, You were great last night. Even though you were stunned, you still held me tightly. It's like you're walking while you sleep. Your hands move spontaneously. I was like a weak little lamb. I tormented myself until midnight before I snuggled into your arms and fell asleep. Did I take you? Jeff asked absentmindedly. Right now, he only cared if she could be pregnant. What do you think? Seeing you satisfied, although I'm in pain, made my heart happy. Her eyes flickered as she said softly. Don't worry, I'll give birth to a son for you. No need. Jeff said in a low voice. As he spoke, he slowly removed her hands from around his waist and stood up with his back facing her. Rest well for two days and get an abortion as soon as possible. If you need one, I'll give you $5 million as compensation. After he finished speaking, he continued putting on his clothes. No, I don't want any money. I want you, Jeff. How can you say such words to me? This isn't what a man should say. Elsa, who is now sitting on the bed, looked at him angrily and said, Five million is nothing. You're rich. If I marry you, five million will mean nothing. The reason this happened is because you drugged me. This isn't from the heart. I won't admit this child is mine if you don't listen to me. I'll have a way of making this child disappear. But there won't be five million dollars for you. I hope you think about it carefully. Jeff said coldly as he finished getting dressed. Are you really that heartless? I gave you the most precious thing, and now you're not only not with me, but you're even forcing me to get rid of the baby. Are all the things I've done for you so worthless? She said, crying while she sat in bed. I've already said that I'll give you five million as compensation. I hope you can make a wise decision. Jeff stated as he walked out. Jeff, don't go. I need you. She gasped as she jumped down from the bed and hugged him from behind. Jeff pushed her away mercilessly and slammed the door to her apartment as he left. Half of what Jeff had said to Elsa was just to scare her if she was pregnant. No matter whose fault it was, how could he bear it? At that moment, he felt the best result would be if she had been intimidated and went and got an abortion. However, he didn't have time to think about her situation. His heart was filled with guilt and unease. He didn't even know how to face Lelaine. After walking on the road for a long time, he finally took out his phone. Of course, he didn't want to confess this to Lelaine, but he wanted to hear her voice so that he would feel more comfortable. Beep beep beep. Sorry, the user you have dialed is temporarily unable to connect. Please try again later. Listening to the digital phone voice, he had a bad premonition the previous day. Her phone couldn't be reached. That day she still couldn't be reached. It seemed that Elsa had lied to him about Lelaine not answering the phone because she had been busy. Jeff's bad premonition grew stronger and stronger. He hailed a taxi and headed straight to the Brightness Star Music Company. As soon as he asked the staff members, he found out that Christine and the others had already returned the previous day. It was as if he had been electrocuted. He asked for Christine's cell phone number and called her straight away. Hello, Christine. I'm Jeff. Is Lelaine with you right now? Why hasn't she come home? I can't get through to her phone either. What? Didn't you ask your friend to bring Lelaine back yesterday? What's going on? Exclaimed Christine. When he heard Christine's words, he felt a chill run down his spine. He knew that something had happened to Lelaine. Who took her? Where and when? It was at the airport terminal. Lelaine said you wanted a friend to pick her up. Then a Cadillac came. The man said he was your friend. So she followed him into the car. Oh yeah, his name was Austin. What's going on? Isn't he your friend? Where is she now? Christine asked. He called Elsa next. He had a premonition that she had planned all this. At that moment, he wasn't even feeling angry at her. He only wanted to confirm that Lelaine was safe as soon as possible. Where's Lelaine now? Hurry up and speak. He asked anxiously. Elsa was not a fool. 
She knew that he now believed that she was lying. However, she couldn't admit that she worked with Austin to devise that plan. I'm sorry I lied to you yesterday. Lelaine came back from Los Angeles with me. She said you told a friend to come and pick her up. And then a car arrived. She confirmed it and then got in the car with him. Elsa said calmly. I know you're lying to me. You asked someone to take Lelaine away. Tell me where she is now. Jeff became anxious. It really has nothing to do with me. If you don't believe me, you can ask Christine and the others. Ask if Lelaine personally said that she would be picked up by your friend. Elsa said. Jeff didn't have time to judge whether Elsa's words were true or false. I already know what you said. Do you have any other clues? Jeff asked. No, I'm the same as Christine and the others. I only know that much. When Elsa heard that he didn't ask her any further questions, the corners of her mouth curled up into a cold smile. Damn it. He cursed into the phone. Wait, Jeff, can you take me to the hospital? This was my first time and I'm scared. He'd already hung up the phone when she asked. Bastard, how dare you hang up on me? Elsa cursed as her face again revealed a trace of cold smile. She muttered. It's fine if you don't go and it'll make things easier for the doctors. Elsa didn't want to go to the hospital yet after she came to her senses as she called Austin to check on his situation. Did you have a good time last night? Elsa asked. She felt that with Austin's experience as a pervert, he definitely would have had his way with Lelaine the previous night. What are you playing at? No. Austin was smoking in his room. He was worried that the police would come and find him. Elsa was shocked and hurriedly asked him what was going on. Austin had planned this together with her, so there was no need for him to hide anything from her. Austin could tell her everything that had taken place. When he finally told her what he had done, Elsa wanted to slap him hard in the face. What the hell? Why did she disappear? He actually hadn't slept with Lelaine, and now he didn't even know where she or her body was. Why was Austin causing so much trouble for her? When my wife and I went down to see her, she was nowhere to be found, who knows where she went. Austin said in frustration. I guess she was saved by a passing car and sent to the hospital. I don't even know if this girl is dead or alive. If she dies then I'll be in big trouble. It's best if she died, let me tell you. She's just a country bumpkin, no one will care about her life. If the police end up finding you, just say that you did it all by yourself. Don't give me up to. Elsa said as she calculated a new plan. Hey Elsa, you don't care at all. Why are you making me shoulder all the responsibility alone? I won't do it. Austin wasn't stupid. She cursed herself in her heart. Let me tell you, this girl's boyfriend isn't an ordinary person. I can tell you that his family is one of the most powerful in the country. If he finds out that we designed this plan, neither of us will have a good ending. I can still protect myself. But you, haha do you know how to write the word death? She said coldly. Why didn't you say so earlier? Damn, you purposely tricked me to playing your game, right? When Austin heard that the girl's boyfriend was so powerful, he couldn't help but curse. Don't act so terrible with me. Let me tell you, we're connected now. One word, do you want to listen to me? Elsa was not someone to mess with. Now was the critical time to get Jeff to secure her future. Fine, I'll listen to you. I'll listen to you, damn it. He slammed his fist into the table. As long as you take full responsibility, I'll definitely be able to protect you. She said. Elsa felt she was already Jeff's woman. She was confident that she could snatch him away from Lelaine. Listen to me. We don't know what happened to Lelaine. The best outcome is if she's still alive and can't remember anything. If that's not the case, then you'll have to find her. If you need compensation, I'll pay you for it. After this incident is over, I'll give you two million dollars. Two million? You have that much money? He understood what she was saying quite well. Although she was a rich girl, it wouldn't be easy for her to give him two million dollars. But if she could, it would be a good deal for him. I'm already in a relationship with her boyfriend, and I'll be marrying him soon. Like I said, his family is one of the country's top families. Do you think I can get hold of two million? Elsa said lightly. She believed that her plan would succeed. She hung up the phone. The previous night had been scary, and Elsa felt sore everywhere. She walked outside, hailed a taxi, and went straight to a popular private hospital in New York.
After waiting for 10 minutes, she was called into the examination room by Dr. Allison Fox, who was a man in his 50s with glasses and a ward on the side of his nose. Miss Hayes, your condition's quite serious and you should have come here straight away. Dr. Fox said, frowning at her. We'll have to watch for any signs of infection. But in the meantime, I'll send you for a CT scan. Thank you, Dr. Fox. I understand. She said, smiling and not at all worried about what the doctor had said. Elsa stared at him and asked. Doctor, what do you think caused this? He thought for a moment and said. Maybe you were taking a bath or having a swim, and you were accidentally scratched by something. Elsa slowly shook her head. No, that's not right. Guess again. Ah. Dr. Fox suspected that there might be something wrong with Elsa. He was a little embarrassed as he said. Well, perhaps you used some sort of sex toy and were a little too strenuous. Still not right. Elsa said with a glimmer in her eyes. Doctor, could this have happened when I slept with my boyfriend? Don't be silly. How could that be possible? He asked, smiling at her. That definitely wouldn't cause something like this. Oh. Elsa said, smiling faintly. She wasn't surprised in the slightest. She placed her hand on the zipper of her pants. The CD skin might be inaccurate. So why don't you take a look for yourself? Miss Hayes, you shouldn't joke about something like that. Dr. Fox said. The hospital has strict rules about that kind of thing. He swallowed hard as he watched her start to open her pants. She pulled her jeans down to her knees with such graceful movements that he couldn't look away. He was becoming extremely aroused. Doctor, would you like to examine me? Elsa said, coquettishly. Oh yes. He said, completely focused on her body. He slowly reached out a hand toward her and just as he was about to touch her skin, she snapped a few photos on her cell phone. What? He spluttered. What was the girl doing? Don't panic. Elsa said with a sneer, pulling up her pants. As long as you do what I tell you, I won't post these photos online. She smirked. You know what would happen if these photos were made public. Dr. Fox realized he had been tricked. What was he going to do if anyone saw those photos? I would be ruined. He thought. Okay, what do you want from me? He asked, gritting his teeth. Just one simple thing. She said. Should anyone investigate my injuries, you need to say that they're a result of rough sex. Also, you need to say that it's likely I'm pregnant. With your reputation as an expert, it shouldn't be difficult to convince everyone. She was worried that Jeff might send someone to investigate her story, so she had to make sure the doctor wouldn't contradict her. Fine. He reluctantly agreed. He had no choice. Who are you trying to con and how did you receive those injuries? I'm not telling you who he is. And it's none of your business how I got hurt. Just remember what I told you to say, if anyone asks. The fewer people who knew, the better. She didn't want to explain what had happened the previous night. Elsa had thrown Jeff onto the bed and taken off their clothes, but she had forgotten one very important thing. The drug she had used to knock him out had left him unresponsive. It had been impossible for her to have sex with him, so she couldn't get pregnant. She had tried for half an hour, but then she had given up. Now she had to pretend that she had slept with Jeff. Elsa was no longer a virgin to make Jeff think it had been her first time. She had taken a cucumber covered with small thorns and used it to produce some blood. To her relief, when Jeff had seen the blood on the bedsheet, he seemed to believe that he had taken her virginity. Jeff called Kenneth Stokes and instructed him to find Lelaine as quickly as possible. When Kyle Sanchez received Kenneth's message, he sent people to search for Lelaine. While he stayed with Jeff in the secret garden guest house, Kyle looked at Jeff's distressed expression, but he couldn't do anything to help, and that left him feeling uneasy and afraid. Jeff sat on a stone tablet in the luxurious courtyard of the guest house. The place was beautiful, with its green grass and flowers, but he barely noticed it. He leaned his arm on the table and said nothing. He sat there four hours. The trees stood tall and unmoving, and their leaves rustled in the breeze. He wasn't in the right state of mind to appreciate his surroundings, and his mood grew steadily heavier. He clenched his fist tighter and tighter. Around 6 o'clock p.m., the sky began to darken. Black clouds covered the sky and not a hint of blue remained. A few muffled rumbles of thunder could be heard in the distance. Hurry up! Get inside! Several voices were urged from outside the courtyard, followed by many hurried footsteps. 
Jeff raised his head and saw Kenneth approaching with a few young men who were dragging a slightly familiar looking man along with them. What happened? Do you have news about Lelaine? Jeff asked anxiously as he stood up. We haven't found Miss West yet. Kenneth said, lowering his head. But I've sent someone out to look for her, so we should find her soon. Useless. Jeff exclaimed, snapping under the pressure. He cursed angrily at Kenneth. Why are you here? Go away. Get out and keep searching until you find her. All of you, get out of here. Yes, sir. Kenneth answered. But Mr. Florenta, I think you should speak to this man. His name is Austin, and he was the one who picked up Miss West at the airport. I didn't have time to interrogate him before I brought him here. Jeff's gaze quickly turned to Austin with such hatred in his eyes that everyone trembled in fear. You. Jeff recognized him. This was the man who had been about to molest Elisa at the gate of Peston University the day before. Things weren't looking good. He grabbed Austin's neck. Speak. He ordered. Where did you take Lelaine? Sir, you're mistaken. Austin whined. It wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. He was scared to death, and there were so many angry people there. How could he possibly remember what Elsa wanted him to say? You're lying. Kenneth slapped him. If you don't tell me the truth right now, I promise I will make you regret being born, and then I'll start on your family. Okay, okay, I'll tell you the truth, I swear. Austin said, nervously, intimidated by Kenneth, he quickly thought it through. With the state Jeff was in there was no doubt he would react violently if Austin told the truth. And then Austin would die. All he could do is follow Elsa's instructions and hope she would protect him. Yes, I lied. He said, carefully keeping his head down. When I arrived at the airport, I saw Elaine, and she was really pretty. Then I heard her call her boyfriend Jeff, so I pretended I was his friend to trick her into getting into my car. Lelaine had told Christine that one of Jeff's friends was going to pick her up, but Jeff didn't care about that. What he wanted to know was where Lelaine was now and what Austin had done to her. The sound of more hurried footsteps came from outside the yard. One of Kenneth's men walked in carrying a blue suitcase. Behind him were two men who were escorting Austin's wife. Jeff's eyes widened as he walked over and picked up the suitcase, recognizing it as Lelaine's from the panda sticker on the side. Mr. Florento, we found this in Austin's bedroom closet. One of the men said. And his wife looked quite flustered, so we brought her here as well. Tell me, what happened? Jeff demanded, glaring at Austin. Where did you take her? Where is she now? He opened the suitcase and took out a pink book. There was a lock on the cover, but he applied a little pressure and popped it open. I drove Lelaine to the hotel. Austin said, trembling with fear as Jeff listened. He opened the book and discovered it was Lelaine's diary. April 2nd, I jumped into Ramsey Lake, and I thought I was going to die, but a boy had followed me there and saved me. Then we ate together, and it felt so good to have someone to share that with. April 13th. I don't understand why Jeff stole Mr. Kent's money. I hate him, but I can't let him go. I have to leave school to work and pay off his debt. But as long as he's okay, it's much more important than me going to school. April 25th. Emerald Island. I just found out that Jeff didn't lie to me. His family's wealth is more than I could have ever imagined. And now I feel like I'm not worthy of him at all. I must try my best to be independent and not be a burden to him. Everything that had happened was recorded in the diary. Jeff had thought that he had misunderstood Lelaine, but seeing this, he was learning something new in their relationship. She had never felt that she was good enough. Silly girl, why would you think that? He muttered, his heart aching, he skipped over many of the pages and went straight to the entry where she went to Los Angeles 